This is the Advantage 360 keyboard from Kinesis. It's a split ergonomic programmable keyboard and it cost me the eye-watering sum of £550 to get here in the UK. And just let that settle in for a minute, okay? £550, that was at a discount rate for a keyboard. I mean, what am I thinking? It doesn't do the dishes, it doesn't put the rubbish out, it's just a keyboard. If you've watched any of my other videos, you will know that a good portion of them have been spent pursuing what I want is the ultimate form of keyboard. I've looked at things like the ZSA Moonlander, I've looked at the Digma Rays, um, I've looked at the Zergatech Freedom, plus some other uh, custom builds or ones that I've built myself like the Soffle or a Dactyl Manuform, and that has led me inextricably to this point. And for now at least, while this board might not be perfect, it would probably take the crown as the best physical form for me. But it's not just about the hardware. When I first saw these boards announced in 2021, I kind of shied away from them a little bit because when I looked at the price, I just thought it was so astronomical, I just put it straight out of my mind. But having been on a bit of a journey for the last year, trying all manner of different keyboards, um, and finding something like the Dactyl Manuform, which I, I like particularly the key wells, but not the lack of um, wrist rests. When Kinesis announced that they were getting more stock of these boards, I got in my order and waited. This board arrived with me on October 31st, Halloween. And after using it for a few days, my initial reaction was that it was frighteningly good. So at this point, I've been using this board every day for about a month. And whilst that's not a long-term test, it's certainly long enough to build up a good idea of what I think about it. And for the most part, this is a very, very good keyboard. Kinesis do two versions of this keyboard. They do a wired one running their own proprietary software, and they do this one, the Pro one, which runs the open source ZMK software. And for reasons we'll get to, I think it's perhaps more suitably named the Expert Edition rather than the Pro. Let's get the bad stuff out of the way first. There's no hot swap on this board, so you can have any switch in the keyboard that you want, as long as it's Gator on Browns. If you're in the US, or you can stomach even more cost because you could get them to import it to the UK, Upgrade Keyboards in the US are the official custom maker of these boards, and you can get pretty much whatever switch you want in there. And they'll even do other sort of upgrades like sound, extra soundproofing, um, and things like um, extended batteries. But for the most part, most of us will be getting this one, which is the standard, not standard, this is the pro version, but not upgrade keyboard one with the Gator on Browns. So let me talk to you a little bit about the, the physical features of this keyboard, if you like. The first thing you'll notice, if you're not already familiar with Kinesis um, products, is it's got this lovely key well, which you, your fingers sit in as you type. This concave scoop is super comfortable to use for long periods of time and does bring uh, the keys on the top and bottom rows a bit closer to your fingers, which might seem a bit academic as you look at it, but you can definitely um, tell that's a thing whilst you're using it. I do wish the keycaps for um, the home row here had a greater scoop. Um, these are the blanks, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it's the same with the standard ones as well. They're just not very simple to discern from the other keys, which kind of is okay here because the Kinesis has obviously got this key well and it kind of guides your hand into the home row anyway, but it would still be nicer if they had a more pronounced um, bump. The build quality is far better than I was expecting. I once ordered one of the Advantage 2, one of their prior, uh, Kinesis' prior keyboards before this, and I kept it for literally an hour because I was shocked at how sort of flimsy it felt and how hollow it sounded. Mercifully, that's not the case here. This feels super solid, you know, I mean, you could bludgeon someone to death with this in a, in a pinch, which I know is a super important feature of a keyboard. It's got this fantastic um, tenting mechanism built in, which, so you press in that little button under there and you just adjust the board to the desired height. There's three different settings, it's not completely um, customizable. And one thing to note with this 360 is that the very bottom setting is still about a 20 degree um, tilt from pinky to thumb, which for some people that might be a problem. I certainly find, particularly in the thumb cluster area, I don't know if it's just because I've not used it for long enough yet, but I find it less comfortable than the perfectly flat layout of the, something like the 360. Um, so, again, at this price, you'd kind of expect a completely flat option to be a possibility, but it isn't, so that is something that you need to be okay with. The sound signature, it is really nice out of the box. I 
I'm led to believe there's no glue used in the construction of these boards. So if you're happy to invalidate your warranty, you could always open this up, desolder the switches and put something else of your preference in if you wish to, or you know maybe add some sorbethane or um, butyl rubber or something like that if you wanted different soundproofing. I was kind of expecting that would be one of the first things that I would want to do, having tried the, the Advantage 2 before, but quite honestly, I just don't think there's a need. This feels, sounds absolutely great. Um, I, I don't feel at this point compelled to do anything with it. Around the top edge of each half, you've got a USB port for charging and you've got a power on off switch. So a physical toggle to turn the power off on these boards. ZMK does have decent um, power saving features built into it. But for me, I've found anecdotally that if I don't physically turn off the two halves, I'll get my Mac being woken up somehow, which I presume is Bluetooth signals or something. Um, I've tried a few different settings there, but the only um, constant solution I've found is to toggle these two, um, is to toggle the two switches off. And to be honest, it's a good feature anyway, because if you do want to carry this board around anywhere, you're gonna want that switched off while you travel anyway. Now, even though there's two USB ports, don't mistake and think that you can somehow connect these two halves together. It does not work like that. You can run a cable to the left-hand side from your computer, and that will see the keyboard as a, a normal physical keyboard, but the connection between the two halves is always done wirelessly. There is um, backlighting across the keys as well, which to be honest, you, you can't really see it particularly well there. It, it looks better than that in person. You just have to trust me. Um, but it's not perky RGB. So again, if perky RGB is what floats your boat, you can safely move along now because you don't get that here. I always leave the backlight turned off because with it being uh, wireless, it gets through the battery at a, a really rapid rate and I don't really get much out of it being lit up anyway. A bonus for me is that aside from the, the thumb cluster area, the actual layout of the keys is identical to the Moonlander. So for me, being able to swap from one to the other has been pretty seamless. And just like with the Moonlander, um, I, I find more than three keys a bit hard to, to manage with the with any of these boards. This is mitigated somewhat by the fact that you, you can just sort of see on the, the thumb clusters that they have a different like profile on the top, which at first I thought <laughs> looked a bit wonky. Uh, aesthetically, uh, wasn't so great, but most of the keys have got their own kind of profile. And it really, over time, you can discern, you know, from a tactility point of view, one key from another just by feel. Finally, I would say RTFM. Read the fantastic manual. It's a really good piece of literature, which is it's concise and very informative. And I almost guarantee that if you do read through it, you'll learn something in there. Aside from the full manual that you get the PDF of, it comes with this quick start manual. You get spare keycaps. This is the bridge connector, which if you are coming from a 360, you can stick this on the bottom and then it will set the two halves at the same distance apart that you would be used to on an Advantage 2, which I think is, is quite a nice um, thing for all the, the Advantage 2 users out there. And it also comes with these two USB-A to USB-C cables, which again, that's just so that you can charge the two halves at once if you need to. So I use the Colmac keyboard layout on my keyboards. And so the standard printed keycaps that come with keyboards are generally useless to me because you can reorient most of the keycaps, but you're always gonna want different homing keys and the like. So these are the sort of standard keys that come with the 360. Um, and when you buy a set of blanks, they come laid out in this nice box here. Important point, as I noted before, because all the keycaps have a different profile, if you get a set of blanks, don't just tip them out and stick them on willy-nilly. You want to be replacing them in the same order as they're laid out in the box. Otherwise, you're not going to get the right profile for where your fingers sit on the key well. Now, the standard keycaps are fine. They're pretty good quality, um, but I do think these blanks are slightly nicer and they give a, a slightly nicer sound signature, but that might be a personal preference. The other option that I ordered at the same time was these plush wrist rests, which are super squidgy, comfortable wrist rests. And what's really nice about them is just, just watch how this works. So it's got magnets underneath that snap these into place. Now, 
they're pretty good. They are very comfortable. But I found because of these magnets, as I'm using it, and if you can sort of see there, you can just occasionally, because it's only held by a magnet, you get a little bit of slip if you're being a bit heavy handed and I'm a bit heavy handed. So I have found more often than not, I end up chucking those aside. That's not necessarily a bad thing because I don't think you really need those wrist rests. Just like with the Moonlander that's got a hard plastic built in wrist rest, I found that perfectly comfortable to rest my hand on. So I would say these are quite nice and if you're lighter of hand, they're probably they're fairly inexpensive amongst the upgrades that they offer and they are very plush, but you might find it a little bit irritating when they sort of slip around. So when you first get it out of the box to get things up and running, you switch both halves on, left first usually because that's the master side, and then the right, and there'll be a little sort of dance with the lights as the two halves find each other. And then you can you can store up to five um, profiles, five Bluetooth profiles on here. So you could theoretically be able to connect to five different devices. Typically I've just got two at the minute, but you've got these lovely LEDs on, on both sides. And what I particularly like about these is the fact that you can, you get a different color for each of the profiles. So it's very straightforward to know, you know, w once you know in your mind which color is associated with which device that you have, to know which one the, the keyboard is currently paired with. I also, I forgot to mention before with the keys, I do really appreciate on the right hand side, they've got 1.25 width keys here, which boards like the, the Moonlander don't have that. They're all one new, like one key width on there. And I prefer that, I think. I think it's very useful because you typically that's where you've got like your meta or your, your utility keys, if you like. You also get on these LEDs, there's a layer um, LED. So again, if you're, if you're holding in, you know, this is where I've got my layer key. And you can see there some visual indication. And again, if I wanted to, to switch to another profile, I hold in my, um, my key there and I would go to a different profile. And you can see that one, hopefully, blinking blue. Oh, that's my first device there. If when you're switching on, you get three blinking lights on the right hand side, that means it can't find the left hand side. And usually you just need to power cycle the two left first, then the right, and the two will find each other. Occasionally, that doesn't work and you need to do um, like a firmware reset. Firmware reset? You need to do a reboot. So you're going to want a paperclip handy and the reset switch, sorry, and the reset switch is right there at the sort of intersection of that big key there on the thumb cluster and those two, sorry, those two. So it's in there. It's a bit of a pain to get to and given the fact you need to do that fairly frequently, I wish it was easier you know, a, just a separate physical switch on the underside to do a reset, I think would make a lot of sense. Now there's no doubt about it, wireless ZMK is not as reliable as wired QMK, for example. If there was an option to get this keyboard with QMK and have it all wired, that would certainly be better resilience wise. But as it is, there is a halfway house where you can connect um, the left hand side to your computer with a USB cable. Right hand side talks to the left wirelessly. The computer sees it like a normal keyboard, but you've still got the sort of fragility, if you like, of the two halves speaking wirelessly. And when it comes to creating the key map for your keyboard, this is where I think this needs to be called the expert version rather than the pro, or thought of as the expert version rather than the pro. Because there's plenty of professionals that are just not going to be interested in grappling code to get the kind of layout they want to be productive. But grapple the code, you must. Kinesis directs you to a web GUI that lets you do the basic key mapping, um, no problem. But you still need to go through the process of creating a repository on GitHub, setting that up, getting the GUI, talking to that repository, and just listen to that. I'm a software developer by trade, so understanding Git is fine for me. But for plenty of people, that's just a whole lot of friction to get the key map that they want onto their keyboard in order to be productive moving forward. In fact, that's not entirely true because you don't need to use GitHub. You could use Podman or Docker, but if you've ever used Podman or Docker, that is by no means any simpler than that, but it might help if for whatever reason, whatever environment you're in, you cannot use GitHub. The way I personally did it is I created the repository, connected to the GUI. With being a Colmac user, I needed fundamentally to change the layout of the alphanumerals first anyway, so I did that with the web interface. Then I pulled that down um, because the, the GUI will write to your repository, then pulled the repository down 
and made amendments to the code in order to get things like auto shift, which is where you can press a key for a little bit longer than normal and get the shifted version of that key. And I did a bunch of um, like three or four different tap dances. Tap dances are where, for example, on this key, I've got it if I, if I tap it once I get an equals, I double tap it I get a plus, and if I press and hold it will zoom in, which is effectively like a command and plus um, in Mac OS. And you know, that kind of a process is a problem. It's, it's incredibly powerful, ZMK is, but the average Joe is just going to be completely at sea trying to get things like that working. Even when you think you've got it working, you've then got to push it up to GitHub and deal with a number of potentially opaque and confusing error messages to why the thing that you've written won't actually build. I'm not suggesting you need to be a member of Mensa to get this up and running, or I'd be screwed, but it isn't a process for the faint-hearted. And this setup of your key map, this being able to play about with the key map, try out different things, this is where things like the software for, for Digmas or the ZSA absolutely shines because doing that is so inconsequential, it's so straightforward, you cannot break it. You know, it'll only let you think, do things that you can actually do. Basically, they allow you to change the key map in the way that it should be able to be done on a keyboard that costs this much. So Kinesis maybe can somehow fund ZMK and hopefully get a, a better user interface for the key mapping side of things. Because at the minute, as good as ZMK is, dealing with the code is really one for the cone heads, not for all and sundry. But let's suppose you get your key map written, however you want to do that. You push it up to GitHub. GitHub works, the, the GitHub Actions creates you your firmware file. You download that firmware file. Inside there, you'll have two files. You connect each half once at a time, double press your reset switch in that little hole. That will put it into bootloader mode. You drag your, your files across once for each half. They automatically dis disconnect themselves, and that's it. You're up, and, you're up and running. You've got everything you wanted set up on your key maps. What is this even like to use? Well, the good news is the 360 is spectacularly good to use day to day. It's super solid, it sounds very nice. When you're swapping between devices, the LEDs are super informative, you know exactly what's going on. Um, I love the fact that you get the LED change when you move to a different layer. As a physical device, as a physical piece of hardware, it's an absolute triumph. This tilting mechanism to, to adjust height, um, I mean, you can sound how clunky, you can hear how clunky that is, but it's, absolutely you know rock solid so hardware wise an absolute triumph the hardware thing you do occasionally get a situation where if i lift that up it kind of clicks through a couple of the, pos the positions but i'm being super picky here that's not something that i do day to day i set it in the position that i want and it stays there rock solid whilst i am being picky i do wish these power switches at the back here were easier to toggle because they're in this sort of little recessed bit here and, and you can't see them, because you do occasionally need to power cycle them, it's a little bit, they're not quite as, as easy to feel and, and toggle on and off as I would have liked. A boot up noise would have also been quite nice. That's something that I really like about the, the Moonlander. And you know, maybe even a little melody when the two halves connect might be useful. But again, I know that I realize that that's not essential, but it is missing here. There's no carry case included. And a keyboard that costs this much, that just seems a bit criminal. I would really like to be able to take this to and from the office, but at the minute, I'm looking at even more cost if I want to do that because I need to get a decent sort of, I don't know, like a camera case or something like that that can fit this in and, and protect it whilst I travel with it. There are other little things which are missing, which they're not deal breakers in and of themselves, but you sort of think at this price point, it would be pretty cool if it had a dedicated RF receiver which would help with some of the connection woes potentially with Bluetooth. Bluetooth's always a little bit iffy and a separate RF receiver, a dedicated one, I think could potentially mitigate that, but it's not here. So you can probably tell that a lot of my grumbles about this board are not because of how it is per se. It's more about, it's the fact that it's so expensive and it's missing these things or the interface stuff doesn't work so well. When you've got your key map on here and it's working, it's a phenomenal piece of kit. Hardware-wise, and day-to-day usage-wise, I don't have any real complaints. There's, there's little things that I would um, prefer, preferences, but there's nothing really wrong with this board at all. 
you know the the different keycaps are great um, I can get you you know I've got used to these thumb clusters um, pretty much straight away um, I love the 1.25 new keys at the side I wish it was it could go completely flat but this 20% one is pretty much okay the tilting mechanism itself is absolutely solid and it just feels like a really sorry um, really good well-made piece of kit but the fact of the matter is this is a ridiculously expensive keyboard and because of that it's impossible to not think about the shortcomings if you're thinking of investing this kind of money because the bottom line is if there was a very slick interface for creating key maps making choices changing things around all that sort of stuff this would be a completely different story i'd be recommending this board wholeheartedly and sort of holding it up as the exemplar of one of these split ergo boards you know something that should be the absolute top of your shopping list but it is super expensive and it doesn't have these things so as it stands right now today with the software in its current form i'm a little bit torn i still think in terms of absolute value for money you cannot beat the zsa moonlander right now they still remain the, the best value for money one of these sort of off the shelf boards i think you can buy i've been running this one for over a year and it's just never skipped a beat and yet the 360 betters it in a lot of areas or you know in some areas you know the key well is almost certainly a better thing um, than having a completely flat set of keys so okay here's the thing you need to be okay with all the caveats that i've mentioned be okay with the price and i think you would be very very happy with this keyboard i'm sure it's going to last many many years and hopefully the software will improve with it but if your pockets aren't that deep and you don't want to faff around with the software to get things up and running which is a considerable investment in your time then i think your money would be better spent on something like a zsa moonlander or a digma race if the review is useful please like it subscribe to the channel if this is your kind of thing it does really help out with other people finding these videos links for all the relevant stuff hopefully is in the the description down below and please let me know in the comments if there's anything that i missed out here that you'd like the answer to i've spent the money here so i can hopefully find out for you maybe stop you spending money unneeded other than that see you again next time